So, let us let us uh, uh, come back, uh, let us enough of theory now, uh, let us take some examples, right. Uh, so, let us uh, uh, for, for taking this example what I have done is, uh, I have collected a data, I have collected a data set of 217 values, right now I will not tell you the context, I will not tell you what the data is about. Uh, sometimes the context of the data helps you uh, guess a distribution. Right, I am, I am avoiding that because I am not even telling you uh, what the data is about. I am not telling you the units of data for example, I will not tell you whether it is dollars or minutes or something, some other units, right, I am not telling you that. I am just telling you that there are 217 values uh, we have collected and for these uh, data points, uh, we want to fit a theoretical probability distribution. Now, let me tell you the properties of these 217 values. Let me tell you a summary statistics. Right. So, you have all these things, right. Uh, you know the mean of these 217 values is 4.40, uh, 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 median and uh, uh, mode values are uh, different, apparently there are multiple modes, right. Uh, standard deviation is 0.38, uh, skewness is 1.46, uh, right uh, uh, and uh, what else? Uh, minimum maximum, minimum is 0 0.01, maximum is 1.96, right. So, what, what clues can you pick up from this summary statistics? Because this is going to help us build or guess a distribution, this is going to help us guess a distribution, ok. Let us, let us, let us quickly uh, uh, understand what this summary statistics is telling us. Uh, if you noticed, uh, I have not named the variable, I have simply called it variable 1, ok. So, I have simply called it variable 1, uh, just to tell you that there is no context to this variable, ok. What do we notice first? This is what I notice first, look at this. Uh, the mean is uh, 0 0.4, uh, the median is 0 0.8, the mod is uh, 0 0.05, which means that uh, mean is not same as, uh, mode is not same as median, right. So, uh, what do I understand from this? Uh, for a symmetric distribution, the mean and the median and the modular value coincide at the same point. Remember normal distribution, the most famous example of symmetric distribution. Uh, for a normal distribution, this is where the mean is, this is where the mode is, this is where the median is, right. So, for a symmetric distribution, the mean, the median and the modular value are going to coincide. So, our, our data set seems to be not of this category our data set has a different mean, a significantly different median and significantly different modular value. So, our data is not from the symmetric distributions. So, that is ruled out, all the symmetric distributions we can rule out. Normal distribution is gone right now, uniform distribution is gone right now, right. Okay, the mean value, max value, the mean value is 0 0.01, max value is 1.96. Uh, 217 values, uh, none of these values seem to be on the negative side, right. So, the support, right, uh, the support, uh, uh, the support of our distribution, uh, the support of our distribution does not seem to be from negative infinity to positive infinity, right. Why am I saying that? Because if the, rand, uh, the, ra if the variable could take on negative values from negative infinity to positive infinity, out of these 217 values, at least some of these values could have been negative right, not essential, but very, very unlikely that if the random variable can take negative values in the 217 values that I have observed, none of them were negative, right. So, uh, the minimum value was 0 0.01, the maximum value was 1.96 tells me that this is not the case, this is not the case, ok. So, uh, uh, the, the distributions that go to the negative side of the line probably are ruled out, probably are ruled out. One more important clue, right, this, what does this tell me? What does this tell me? Skewness, what does skewness tell me? Skewness is what? Skewness tells me about the symmetry of the distribution. Now, for my data set and once again, I have no clue what the data set represents, the data set seems to be skewed, right, and particularly this is positive 1.46. What does that mean? It is a positive skew. Now, do you recall what a positive skew means, ok. What a positive skew means? Positive skew means that 
it is skewed to the right. Skewed to the right means the right tail is bigger than the left tail, right. So, this is your random variable x, this is the density function. So, this is the left tail, this is the right tail. So, we are saying that a positive skew indicates that the right tail is bigger than the left tail. This the difference in the mean, mode and median told us that ours is anyway not a symmetric distribution. That was confirmed from the skewness value. Skewness value is now telling me that the right tail is bigger than the left tail. Right tail keeps on extending longer than the extension of the left tail, right. So, what are the positive skew distributions that I can think of? Imagine all of those in your mind and uh, those are the potential candidates, those are the uh, distributions that I may want to fit to my data, all right. So, these are the clues, right. I mean, we will discuss these clues uh, in couple of slides, but these are the quick clues that I can understand from the summary statistics about the data set that I have collected. What more can I look at before I uh, decide to fit a distribution? Can you think of anything else that I can present to you, which will help you uh, guess a distribution? Obviously, graphical output, right. Why do not I show you box plot, box plot, right. This is the box plot. You all know what a box plot is. Uh, if you uh, have not uh, discussed a box plot, uh, well, uh, uh, let us know and we will discuss box plot in the subsequent uh, uh, sessions. Uh, this box plot uh, is a typical output uh, from any statistical package, uh, but uh, this box plot uh, does not give me a true picture. So, let me tilt it by 90 degrees and show you this box plot, same box plot actually uh, tilted at 50 degrees. So, what, what does the box plot show? Box plot has this box, this is your box. What is this box? This box if you recall, this was the 25th percentile, uh, this was the 75th percentile, the middle, uh, middle line is the 50th percentile. Do you know what is 50th percentile? Obviously, the median and then the whiskers, right. Uh, going back, uh, okay. Uh, this whisker, the left whisker seems to be very short, the right whisker seems to be going all the way. Now, what are these points? 207, 209, 217, 214, what are these points? These are the observation numbers. Recall uh, we had a data set of 217 values. So, uh, these are the observation numbers, right. Uh, so, uh, observation number 214, uh, observation number 213, observation number 210, observation number 209, right. So, the right tail seems to be, uh, the right side uh, values seem to be going, right. These are the values. So, the median is somewhere here, this is somewhere the median, right. And what was the median? What was the median? Let me go back to the previous slide, okay. Let us go back one more, let us go back one more, okay. What was the median? Median was 0 0.28, 0 0.28. Let us see where the median is, 0 0.28, yeah, somewhere there is 0 0.28. Right. So, uh, the left whisker seems to be only up to that point, the right whisker seems to be up to this point. However, there are values beyond the right whiskers. So, recall all the discussions that you may have had about the box plot and an interpretation of the box plot. The only point that uh, uh, I wish to emphasize from the box plot, the shape of the box plot is that uh, the values on the right hand side are extending well into the uh, well into the right side, right side of the x axis, right, which essentially means that this distribution has a right skew, this distribution has a positive skew, okay. What else? Let me show you the, uh, let me show you the uh, bar chart for this data. This is the bar chart, okay. Looks similar, looks similar to uh, 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 box plot. Now, uh, it tells us that uh, uh, there are large number of values which are cl close to 0, very large number of values about 15 percent of the values are very, very close to 0, right, very close to 0 and then the kind of uh, uh, frequency drops uh, and uh, there are very few values which are uh, more than 1.5, right, very, very few values, few observations which are more than 1.5. Recall our uh, uh, range was anyway 1.95 where the maximum value was 1.96, so this must have been 1.96. Right. So, uh, this, 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 is the, uh, this is the frequency, uh, uh, the height of the bar chart obviously repre represents the frequency. Now, you may change the width of the bar chart and uh, try to get different shapes, right. Uh, this is slightly thicker bars, uh, the earlier one was slightly thinner bars. 
but uh, the frequency seems to be dropping as you go uh, uh, in the values. So, as the values increases, the frequency seems to be dropping. Okay. Has this given you some clues about uh, what may be a distribution to fit? What distribution may fit the data? Any clues? Any, any ideas? Keep thinking, keep thinking. I will show you more, one more bar chart, even, even thicker bar this time, right? even thicker bar this time. So, once again, uh, as the values of the random variable increases, the frequency seems to be decreasing, right. Okay. So, let us, let us uh, formally write down what clues, what clues we get, right? What, what are the clues that we are trying to understand from the data? So, uh, usually for us, uh, sum summarizing whatever we have discussed so far, uh, for symmetric distributions, the mean and the median and the mode matches, right? Uh, uh, if in the data set, uh, if the mean value and the median value are sufficiently close to each other, we may still think about symmetric distributions. But then you will ask me how close is close enough? What is sufficiently close? Well, those are right now we are only making an educated guess. We have not made any uh, decision yet. We are only guessing distributions, right? Uh, so, uh, if mean and median seem to be close enough, you can try out uh, symmetric distributions to fit the data. But if the mean and median are not close enough, probably symmetric distributions is not the way to go forward. Look at the coefficient of variation. This is something that we had missed out looking at the summary statistics. What is coefficient of variation? Do you recall what was coefficient of variation? Coefficient of variation C v is indicated by mu by sigma, sorry sigma by mu, sorry, right. Uh, sigma by mu. Now, uh, what is the sigma here? Sigma is 0.38, right? and the mean is 0.4. This is your estimation of sigma. I mean, this is not exactly sigma. This is actually S, which is sample standard deviation. And you have a sample size of 217. In absence of anything else, you are going to say that uh, this is my population standard deviation. And uh, this is my sample mean. And I am going to say that this is my best estimate for uh, population mean. So, uh, the C V seems to be close to 1, 0.38 divided by 0.4, right. Now, uh, C V does give me some indication. If the C V is close to 1, exponential distribution, C V for exponential distribution is always 1. If you recall, <coughs> 1 by lambda and 1 by lambda are the mean and variance. Right, uh, uh, sorry, 1 by lambda and uh, uh, 1 by lambda is uh, the mean and standard deviation. So, for exponential distribution, C V is, C V is always 1. Uh, for our data, C V seems to be close to 1. Right, uh, uh, if, uh, uh, yeah, if, if the histogram looks uh, slightly right skewed distribution with uh, C V greater than 1, uh, log normal distribution may be a better approximation for our data. Right, uh, uh, why is that true? look at the shape of the normal distribution, uh, log normal distribution, right. Uh, so, uh, for some distributions, however, this C V data is not even useful. For some distributions, C V is not even useful, right. Some, uh, for uh, not useful because it is not even defined. When is that? What are the examples when C V may not even be defined? Recall, what was C V? C V was sigma by mu. Now, do you recall standard normal distribution? Standard normal distribution? Standard normal distribution mu is 0. If mu is 0, C V may not even be defined. So, how are you going to use uh, C V, right? So, note that uh, uh, using C V may give us clues. However, uh, this is not the tell all kind of a thing. It gives us clues, sometimes it may not even be available. There is something called a Lexis ratio. Lexis ratio is essentially C V for discrete distributions. Similar interpretations, uh, but uh, that is not called C V, that is usually called Lexis ratio. Now, we have already discussed this skewness. Skewness may give us some hints, right. Uh, uh, skewness for normal distribution is 0 because uh, skewness uh, represents uh, asymmetry of the data and normal distribution is famously symmetric. So, uh, 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 if the skewness value is 0, you are thinking about all the symmetric distributions like normal distribution. Uh, if skewness is positive, you are thinking about uh, right skewed distribution, for example, exponential distribution which has a skewness of 2. And for uh, uh, 
skewness values which are less than 0 <coughs> negative skew, uh, you are talking about left skew distribution where the left tail is bigger than the right tail. Okay, the left tail extends longer than the right tail. Okay. Now, let me pause here and ask you, uh, looking at all these discussions, uh, what seems to be a good fit for our data? Our data has mean, ma mean mode, median different, skewness is positive, CV seems to be close to 1, CV seems to be close to 1 and we saw box plot, we saw bar chart, we saw a lot of things. What do you think? I would say, let us try fitting exponential distribution to our data. One thing you also notice, what is the support for exponential data? Support meaning what are the values that an exponential random variable can take? Uh, exponential random variable can take uh, values from 0 to infinity, okay, can take values from 0 to infinity. Remember in our data set, uh, we, we did not have any negative values. So, the, the support could start from 0. Obviously, our maximum value was 1.95, 1.96, uh, exponential distribution can go all the way to infinity, right. Uh, but uh, why do not why don't we check whether exponential distribution fits very well. So, uh, we are going to try that uh, at the end of the session, we are going to share an excel sheet where you can try out whether exponential distribution fits very well, but I have some results uh, uh, towards that. So, let, let us let us go further, right, let us let us go beyond. Okay. Once you have done that, uh, once you have done that, uh, once you have estimated a uh, distribution to be fit. Uh, let us uh, estimate the parameters. Uh, uh, so, parameters, uh, uh, every, para every probability distribution has a parameter or set of parameters. For example, binomial distribution, you need n which is the uh, number of experiments to be conducted and p which is the probability of success in each trial. For normal distribution, mu and sigma are the two parameters. For exponential distribution, lambda is the parameter. You know what lambda is, this is your lambda. And you know how lambda plays a very, very important role uh, in uh, uh, defining the density function and therefore defi defining all the subsequent properties of the exponential distribution. Now, the most commonly used method to estimate the parameters of our distribution happens to be MLE. What is MLE? It is the most likelihood method, most likelihood estimation. Right, and I am assuming that uh, MLE was also discussed in some course, uh, in some sessions uh, for you uh, before. Therefore, we are not going to focus on how do you estimate parameters using most likelihood estimators. Right, uh, you define uh, uh, a, a log estimate, or a log likelihood function. You take the derivative of that log likelihood uh, function, and then that's how you estimate uh, the parameters of your distribution. Let's let's not uh, go deeper into MLE. But let us say that uh, I have guessed a distribution uh, for my data set, I have guessed a distribution. Right now, I am going to try out exponential distribution. Now, exponential distribution has a single parameter called lambda and using uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimation method, uh, I probably have guessed the value of lambda. Let us say that that is also done. What is next? What is next? Obviously, guessing a distribution is clearly not enough we have to check how good exponential distribution fits the data. How good is this fit? We have, we right now has, have, have kind of thought that exponential data will, exponential distribution will fit the data well. How good is this fit? Right, that is the next thing to be done. 